Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Data Tech. I'm your host Anand Kumar. In this video, we're going to discuss about AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is a serverless service that allow us to run code without provisioning or managing servers. With AWS Lambda, we can focus on writing the code in various programming language such as Python, Node.js, etc and let AWS handle the compute infrastructure for us. Lambda functions are triggered by events. That could be a change in a data, API request, a new file upload in S3, etc. Let's try to understand AWS Lambda with a simple Python example. First, sign in into AWS Management Console and search for AWS Lambda service. After landing into AWS Lambda, func uh, Lambda service, click on create function. So after that, we land, in, land on this page and here we see we have three options available for creating our function. The first one is creating it from scratch. Second one is utilizing an existing template using a blueprint. And the third one is using a container image. In this case, we will create the function from scratch. So we'll select author from scratch. Give it a name. So we'll give it name um, first lambda function oh it's already exist okay let me make it different first lambda fun just an abbreviation of our functions after that we need to configure our function like we need to pick the programming language in which we want to do it like we want to create the function so we're going to create it in python let's go here and here are the latest supported uh, various applica uh, applications versions are here for python they support 3.10 they have other functions to 3.7 3.8 3.9 let's uh, pick 3.8 and rest of the things will keep it to the default click on create function It will take a couple of seconds to create the function because we like when the function is creating it also create the default role for it that's why it takes like a couple of seconds to create it and now once the function is created we land on this page and here you can see our function is available with the name of first lambda fun and we see trigger and destination. As I mentioned, our Lambda function uh, are triggered by event. So we need, this is for that. And destination is something optional where if where you wanna store the output of the Lambda function. We're going to look into both of them in detail uh, in upcoming videos, but here we will focus on, on the Lambda function. Okay, so once uh, it is created, it give us a skeleton of code like it's the default code once uh, we create a lambda function and the next thing we'll do we'll copy our lambda function here i'm going to share the link of my github link to this function so you can use it or you can practice by yourself so let's copy paste it so we copy pasted this and in this example, we define a Lambda function using Lambda handler, and that is something we need to keep in uh, mind irrespective of uh, uh, what kind of Lambda function you are writing in Python, like always Lambda function is defined by Lambda handler. And Lambda handler takes two parameters. The first one is event and the second one is context and event event parameter provides information about the triggering event. So in this example, we will pass this manually, but 
in a real world in a real world situation or whenever you're creating a lambda function whatever is trigger information like it could be a data or it could be some other information is passed using the event parameter and the context parameter provides runtime information we don't have to worry about uh, this at this point so after that like let's look into the function here uh, the function extract age and name from the event parameter which is basically a dictionary and perform a simple check whether the age of the person is greater than 18 and they are allowed to vote or not and finally return it uh, return the message so here we can see like event is uh, used to extract the name and age of the function we are storing them in variable name and age and after that we are doing a simple check if age is greater than 18 our message will be this and if uh, else our message will be this which is basically if you are above 18 you are eligible to vote and if you're not you are not eligible to vote with the name very simple function because now we have made the changes uh, to the function which was given to us we need to deploy it and that's why you're seeing changes change are not deployed click on deploy and now our changes are deployed the next thing we need to do is let's test this function by passing the event dictionary manually so how do we do that how do we do that just click on test and here you see create a new event here yeah. That's a new function. So we'll create a new event. We'll give it an event name test. And whether it's private, share, we keep rest of the things pretty same. And event, as I mentioned, like it's a parameter passed with the triggering event information. In, in this case, uh, we need age and name. So we'll pass them here. So let me do one thing. Just remove this. So our first dictionary will be, let's say name, I think name, give it a name, let's say John. And next is age, give it a name, oh my bad. Give it a name, uh, age, let's say John is 50 and save it so we here we are manually like in this case like we manually created the event and now let's test it so we'll click on this and you can see here the response hello john you are eligible to the vote and that is what our lambda function was supposed to do like whatever we passed as uh, like we manually passed the event information in a JSON format, they were passed here and stored in variables, check the condition. And based on that, the message was returned. And here we don't have, a, like we haven't added any trigger, uh, such as like with other services or something or any destination. So we just testing it in a simple Lambda function like, this we can say that this example is a simplified to focus on the basic structure of a lambda function in the next videos we will look into how to configure with the events and integrate lambda with other aws service services uh, that's all for this video thank you have a good one